This here is the Ford F-150 Lightning, a full-size electric pickup truck. This though is the standard range version. That's the version with the smaller battery pack. There is an extended range version for sale in the US, but this one here, as far as I know, this is the only version of the F-150 Lightning that is officially on sale in Europe through four dealerships. There are gray market imports. You can buy an extended range version through a gray market import dealer here in Norway, but then you don't get the five-year Ford warranty, which you get with this car. So I've already put this car through most of the paces I do here on the channel, the range test, a long trip test. But in this video, I wanna do a new test, which I'm probably gonna call like the city and suburb test because Electric cars actually perform very well driving at lower speeds compared to on a country road or on a motorway. The other tests I do, which has to do with range, are done at motorway speeds or even high speed country roads. But I think this car, because it is so big and it is so square and heavy, it will actually get much closer to the WLTP rated range of 429 kilometers in more of slower driving scenarios like in the city or in a suburb. And I think a lot of people who may be looking to buy a car like this in Norway or maybe in a European city is gonna use it for work. Maybe they do construction work, maybe do they, it's kind of like services where they're gonna mostly use the car in a city and at a little bit lower speeds than going from city to city, like on an interstate as you would do in the United States. So that's the new test in this video. So I'm pretty excited. My hypothesis is that this is going to perform much better in this test than it has in my range test and also my long trip test when it comes to consumption and overall range. Before we continue this video, I just want to give a huge thanks to Septic with their Septic Go for sponsoring today's video. The Septic Go is a small, cool, and stylish home charger that can charge up to 22 kilowatts and will work with every electric car on the market, including a Tesla. The Septic Go is so good, it actually won best in test in the Norwegian Automobile Association's test of chargers in 2022. So if you want to support the channel, if you want one of the best chargers on the market, go to the link down below, find your country, click on the link and purchase one from there. I'm not entirely sure about the route in this test, if I'm gonna have a standardized route and how long it's gonna be. The only thing I know is that I'm starting where I live at my house in the suburbs of Oslo, about 15, 16 kilometers outside of the city. And then we're gonna drive into the city. We are actually approaching the city now. And I'm gonna drive around the city a little bit. So it's probably gonna be a decent distance. I'm actually headed into town out to, uh, you know, pick up a, a friend of mine. We're gonna just, you know, get a coffee and, and drive around and, and hang out. So this is gonna be in combination with that. What I, what I wanna do is I wanna try to park this car because in the suburbs of Oslo, actually no problem driving this car. Like the streets are wide enough, some places it's a little bit tight, but it hasn't really been a problem. But parking some places has actually been a little bit of an issue but after a week in this car i've actually gotten very used to the size and i don't think i don't feel it's very big or overwhelming but i do like sitting high especially driving here and having just an overview of of all the traffic it is actually actually really nice so this test i don't want to do like a pure range test i already do that i want to you know do a which i'm probably going to call this test like the city and suburb test where I want to drive, you know, in the city and in the suburbs of Oslo, and then we're going to gauge the range and get a result at the end of the video. I'm probably going to do a truck like we do in the other test, but I also want to talk about how the car is to drive and to live with in the city. And this being like six meters long almost hasn't been an issue. Of course, I am used to driving big cars, so they don't intimidate me. If you are intimidated by big cars, then of course this is, isn't going to be, isn't going to be, you know, something for you for you I and mean, that's that's just plain and simple but one of the reasons I want to do this test is a lot of people are probably the most most people use their cars at lower speeds they don't go on long trips they don't go like between cities they don't go always at a constant 120 kilometers an hour or even 100 kilometers an hour which is the average speed in my long trip test the fact is that an electric car is most efficient when it's going slow because unlike an internal combustion engine car, you don't have heat loss in the same extent. Like 
about 60, 70, sometimes 80% of the energy used in an internal combustion engine car is just wasted into heat and into noise. That's not the case with an electric car. In most electric cars, about 85 to 95% of that available energy is actually used to move the car forward. So they are so much more efficient. And that means driving a big car like this at 120 kilometers an hour, you have a lot of air resistance, you have a, a lot of inertia, you have to push through the air. And you just, that isn't the case going at a lower speed because aerodynamics isn't as big of a problem. Another problem though, which isn't as big as aerodynamics, is getting the car moving from a standstill, getting that inertia, inertia moving initially. So I don't want to do, do too much city driving, but there's gonna be a little bit stop and go traffic. So after about 20 minutes now, 12 kilometers, or I live closer to the city than I thought. There's only 12 kilometers here in Mariushtuin, which is like almost the central part of Oslo. Average consumption after 20 minutes is 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers with an outside temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. That is pretty, pretty good so far. So let's see how this uh, evolves further. We're now inside the city of Oslo and we're gonna try to parallel park this big pickup truck. The problem is it's almost six meters long. So just finding a parking spot is a challenge within itself because most cars park with like a gap of five meters because most cars are less than five meters long. So let's drive around a little bit and see if we can find a parking spot because everything I'm looking at now just looks too small. Okay, after about 10 minutes of driving, we've found a spot that looks to be big enough. So let's try this out. The problem with this specific car is that the parking sensors don't work, but we still have a back backup camera. We still have a 360 camera and we have really big mirrors and really good visibility. So yeah, this is pretty, pretty easy and pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, no problem at all. You can park an F-150 Lightning on the streets of Oslo if you just have a little bit of patience to wait for a parking spot that is big enough. Here in central Oslo, you see these really narrow streets where you really can only drive one car at a time. So that means if you're here first, the car coming you know, towards you has to yield. And that is true if you drive a large full-size pickup like this or you drive a small Volvo EX30 it really doesn't matter. So you're not really feeling that size of this car just driving through the streets. Though there's one thing I have noticed because Oslo is a very pedestrian filled city. There are a lot of people just walking around even though on these like uh, streets that are far away from you know one of the main shopping streets over here. There's still a lot of people walking around and there are crossings everywhere and then their cars parked like this. So you really have to pay attention and especially with children which really just disappear behind this large hood because it's so tall you just have to be really aware of that but yeah i have this car in one pedal driving now and that's really nice to drive around in the city because if you know somebody's walking up to the crossing you just let off the throttle and then the car just comes to a stop so really nice you have that immediate response if you want to like this lady here crossing you have that immediate response if you want to stop for a pedestrian or if you're just unsure if somebody's coming or not so you don't have to you know move your foot to the brake i really like that so here we just have to wait until it's clear but you can see like this eveco truck here that's a much bigger truck than what i'm driving and people manage totally fine but having sitting this high it is really nice you do have really you know good view overview of of all the the traffic here though the a pillars especially with these grab handles can be a little bit big so I have, you know, found myself losing people behind the A pillar. And now we were waiting, waiting for a really long time. A lot of pedestrians here. So that guy in the BMW, he actually should have stopped there, but it's fine now because the traffic's now going. But usually he would have tr had to stop to make a gap because I'm coming from his right and he has to yield for us. So we have to yield for a traffic to the right. This kind of motorcycle has to stop here. So there's a lot of stop and go traffic and having this large greenhouse, just having great visibility around the whole cabin is really practical with these big wing mirrors. But I, I am aware that I am driving a full-size pickup that is almost six meters long 
as we showed while trying to park it and you're moving like three tons through the streets so especially with pedestrians also here like i have to swerve it really isn't too much of an inconvenience you know having this large car it's only when parking so i don't think it's actually too bad so i've been doing stuff all day a few friends of mine we went for dinner so i haven't been driving that much i've only done about 36 kilometers and consumption is now up to 27 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so let's take this on a route around oslo outside of the city on a little bit more you know not these crowd super crowded like city streets like here uh where it's really stop and go that is really eating it into the consumption but i don't think it's too bad here also like we have to take a right here because of some construction and here they have parking spots for for electric cars and no problem for us parking here this is too easy i wanted to try something a little bit harder but like these parking bays here to my right this car just is too big for those after almost four hours on the road covering 76.6 kilometers mostly done in the city center of oslo about 45 to 50 kilometers of that was within oslo itself and the rest on the suburbs on our way out of oslo on the motorway but with speed limits of only 80 kilometers an hour in oslo and driving a little bit around in the suburbs our average consumption has ended at 25 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers with an average speed of a little bit more than 20 kilometers an hour because most of the driving was done stop and go traffic slow speeds in the city center of oslo and as predicted the consumption a lot lower than in my other tests the range test and the long trip test at 25 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that is a lot lower than anything we've achieved with this car so we take the battery pack of this car, 98 kilowatt hours usable, divided by the consumption, and then subtract 3% of heat loss. That gives us a theoretical range under today's conditions, dry roads between 10 and 13 degrees Celsius, and sunny weather of 380 kilometers, which again is a lot more than I've been able to get out of this car in any other driving circumstances. So as I predicted at the beginning of the video that this test was going to yield a lot better results than any of the other tests I've done because of the aerodynamics of this car really not coming into play at those lower speeds. So if you're considering an F-150 Lightning standard range and you're thinking like, oh, it doesn't get enough range while going on a motorway in the test you've seen, but you're not going to use it on the motorway that much you're going to use it mostly in the city and in the suburbs so hopefully this test has been hopeful because i've shown today that at these speeds driving in a city and in the suburbs this car actually gets very close to its wltp rated range of 429 kilometers so guys let me know down below do you think the results are good or bad i'm curious to know down below so comment what you guys think so i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always Please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.